somebody came to me recently, uh, one of our subscribers who watches, and said one of the most discouraging things to deal with as a Christian is other Christians because we expect more from each other. And that's a real problem and something we all deal with. And so how do I look at that? How do I deal with that? How do I stay encouraged? Do I need to ignore it? Do I need to uh, put everybody in place? What are the answers there? So we'll take a look at that in this video. I'm Zach with a quest for greatness back to give you another video that will help you in building an understanding of what it means to have a personal relationship with God. And that's really our goal here. And we're doing that by looking at truth, by looking at, once again, the practical side of Christianity, how to live this stuff out, and also dispelling myths. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the like button if this video helps you. Also, the notification bell that lets you know when new content is available. Po to do. <laughs> Spell it. Po to do. This comedian was talking about somebody in his family said that, you know, if they would just do what they po to do. For those of us that are uh, Caucasian, that means supposed to do. That's what this is about, though. Supposed to do. You know, what is expected? And, um, it's, it's real. When you see people who should know better, look, the rest of the world, we understand. They don't know any better. And even if they do, there's not much expected of them. Well, there is more expected of us and the people that can discourage us the most are the ones who have those higher expectations. And I want to read to you from Luke chapter 12 in verses 43 through 48 and uh, show you something here as far as this, this idea of more expectation. It's biblical. Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly, I say to you, he will set him over all his possessions. But if that servant says to himself, my master is delayed in coming, begins to beat the male and female servants to eat, drink, and get drunk, the master of that servant will, will come on a day when he does not expect him, and in an hour he does not know, and he will cut him in pieces and put him with the unfaithful. And that servant who knew his master's will, more expectation, but did not get ready or act according to his will, will receive a severe beating. But the one who did not know and did what deserved a beating will receive a light beating. Everyone to whom much was given of him, much will be required. And from him to who they entrusted much, they will demand the more. So you expect certain people to behave because there is more expectation even from God there. And it even gets into degrees of punishment, eternal punishment, which we could talk about at another time. And you see other aspects like wasted potential, wasted opportunity. There's not much that drives me more crazy. And I catch flack from people because maybe I, at, at times I am too hard on Christians. But I, I see Christians keeping each other in check in the Bible. And we're supposed to keep each other accountable and hold each other to a higher standard. And that's part of it. Some of the, the most difficult words that Jesus ever said was to religious people who were supposed to know better, who should have seen him coming. But the potential, you know, you think back places like Hebrews chapter five, where he wanted to talk to them about Melchizedek at the end of that chapter, and he couldn't do it because by the time they should have been teachers, they still needed milk. They, they, they just hadn't grown. They didn't even know how to discern good from evil. So you see that and it irritates and it frustrates and it discourages. And sometimes you think about quitting and sometimes you want to pull back and make them do more. Or you want to set them right or or I want to just uh, get in their grill and tell them, you know, what needs to be said and so forth. Well, that's the point of this video. How should I respond to that? How do I keep from getting discouraged as well and letting them drag me down? All right, the truth is this. You may be hoping in people too much. I say, well, wait a second. This is about other people, not about me. Well, that's the problem because Satan wants you to think and me to think that it's about us or it's about me. You to think that it's about you. It's not. You may be putting too much into other people in the first place. We got to go back to Matthew chapter 7 and verse 3. Look, I know the context there where Jesus is talking about judging, but he makes a good point here. Why do you see the speck that's in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? You have things to fix too. You are a disappointment to certain people as well. You discourage other people as well. And Romans 14 and 15, Ephesians 4, talk about bearing with each other, right? That's part of being humans and all of us being fallible. Uh, and so forth. But 2 Corinthians 13 and 5, I need to examine me. I need to test myself to make sure that I'm not missing the mark, that I don't lose my salvation. So while you want to think about everybody else and what's wrong with everybody else, 
if you turn the focus more on yourself, you're going to have less time to be discouraged by those other people. Difficult to do. I grant that. But I need to be strong enough. In fact, when I'm thinking about Romans 14 and Romans 15, I need to be the one that can bear with the weak, the one who are, ones who are so discouraging. I need to be able to help them. I need to help build them up instead of like I normally want to do, tear them down, tell them what all is wrong with them and, and get on to them. And I know a certain people like this who ruin their own faith by looking so negatively at the church and thinking, well, uh, so many people don't get it. That's right. But you know, if that equation ruined everything, then, then Jesus would have stopped at the Sermon on the Mount. It blows my mind that he gave you the ratio in Matthew 7, that there's a broad way that so many people are going to go toward and into, and a narrow way that few people are going to find. And he kept preaching, and he kept on, and he even went to his death. That ratio causes a lot of us to give up if we don't take the mindset that Jesus had. Another part of the problem is that you're looking at the people who are in this room, or some of them aren't in this room, and maybe you're discouraged because they don't... They're not here as much as they need to be or whatever the case is. And you're thinking way too much about uh, the people in this room instead of looking at Jesus. So that's my final bit of encouragement is to look at Jesus. And look, again, it's real. I deal with it. You deal with it. Um, how do we be effective? How do we be godly about it? And there's a couple of things I, I wanted to mention. The first one is that, that God has the most reason to be discouraged when you say, I mean, as much as it hurts me and bothers me, who are they really sinning against? And who are they really letting down? They're letting God down way before they're letting me and you down. So let's not get, get out of line here and take it as personal. Be concerned for those people who aren't behaving the way they should, who aren't living the way they should, who don't get it. But also think about being, here's the cliche, part of their solution to help them. And remember that God has the most uh, expectation for them. In Matthew chapter 16, let me read, uh, remember, uh, when I read this to you, remember that this is a, probably about nine months away from Jesus uh, being crucified. And this is the first time he's really letting them know what's going to happen in Jerusalem. And these disciples have been with him more than a couple of years now. And you figure they would have grown to a certain point. But, but watch this reaction that you, you've heard before, probably. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he, being Jesus, turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Now, how disappointing do you think that was to Jesus? That Peter probably should have known better by this point. So the discouragement has always been there, but most of all for God. The other, I was talking about wasted potential. Uh, earlier. And, and we look at people and we see that there's so much more. I see with young people, I see with grown people, that there's so much more there and either they can't see it or they don't care, whatever the case is. Well, consider John 17, 1. Uh, no, I, another verse, excuse me. Luke 22, 44, 45 through 48. And he arose from prayer. He came to his disciples, found them sleeping for sorrow and said to them, why are you sleeping? Rise and pray that you may not enter into temptation. While he was still speaking, there came a, a crowd, and the man called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He drew near to Jesus to kiss him, and Jesus said to him, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? Wasted potential. He's got disciples that can't even stay awake with him to watch for him so he can have prayer time to himself with God because they don't realize what all is going on. Then he's got another disciple who's probably angry with him for a variety of reasons, who is greedy already, and who comes to him to betray him with a kiss. Talk about wasted potential. So look at Jesus, look how he deals with him, and watch him deal with his disciples who were, could have been the biggest disappointments in the world, and watch him nurture them, care for them, not take it personally, uh, and, and take my cue from that. So when you're dealing with people that discourage you, remember to look at yourself, Remember to keep it in perspective and don't let it ruin your faith and be that person that helps them, that bears with them.